Welcome to Zurich Talks, I'm your host, Olivia Kinghorst. In this series, we'll be hearing from the industry veterans working at the forefront of digital innovation at Zurich Insurance. During this period of intense technological change, insurers are at the eye of the storm. And through these conversations, I'm keen to discover how Zurich is harnessing the power of digital technology in service of their customers. Joining me for this episode of Zurich Talks is Penny Siege, Chief Underwriting Officer at Zurich Insurance Group. Penny, how do you describe what you do to your friends and family? Well, first of all, thank you for having me today. Um, I love being in the insurance industry, which um, does maybe sound like a bit of a geeky thing, um, but I try and just simplify it when I'm talking to people. And in essence, I describe my role in the industry as being a problem solver within the financial services space. When people ask me what that means is I say, you know, we get to play every day with looking at the world and looking at risks in the world and then finding solutions for that. Sounds like a great way to start a dinner conversation. So you have a long career in insurance, 25 years in fact. What draws you to this industry and what makes you jump out of bed? Well, the fact that every day is so different. Uh, the world around us every day has got something new in it. Um, and if you look at it through different perspectives, you will see different things. Every day is challenging and stimulating. I love puzzles. I love being able to look at things and try and find a solution and try and find a way through and around things. So yeah, that's why every day I jump out of bed smiling. You've seen a lot in your career because you first joined Zurich back in 2017. You covered the Hong Kong market, then EMEA, and now the entire group. So what stands out to you from working in such diverse markets? I've had an incredible um, opportunity to work in very, very different countries. Um, and there's a lot of things that are similar, but different perspectives. And I think that that's, for me, what has been so interesting. So looking at the same problem or same issue, but through different lenses, and then bringing that together to see one solution, but through different eyes, um, I'd say that that's probably the thing that has stood out for me the most, that we see things in a similar but very nuanced type of way. And I think curiosity is extremely important in your current position as Chief Underwriting Officer. So explain to us, why is underwriting so crucial to everyday people like you and I taking out an insurance policy? Yeah, because... The insurance policy is about making sure that when things, when when that something bad happens or where there is an outcome that is adverse, um, that the last thing that you then have to worry about is the financial implication of that, or being able to pick up the phone and say, "I need some help. Can someone come and support?" So getting an expert to you as quickly as possible. So that's the value of insurance, um, and you never appreciate it until something goes wrong, unfortunately, and then you need it. We really do focus, though, not just on, on being there in time of need, but also working with our customers, um, be they big or small, um, to help prevent and to make sure that hopefully that insurance policy is never needed. So we have a deep and drive, uh, strong focus on, on building and driving resilience for all of our customers. How has this process actually evolved since you first joined the insurance industry? What does the underwriting process look like today? Yeah, very, very different. It's very different five years ago. And it's just simply because our ability to ingest so much data and so much information um, is just year on year. It's just evolving and and become it can become overwhelming. Um, and that's why having using technology in a really smart way really helps as an underwriter, helps us work through a mass of data and a mass of of stuff that is out there and really help us to, to distill it to things that really matter for us. We're going to touch on data in just a moment, but tell us in this, in, in this digital age, what do you think makes an effective and successful chief underwriting officer? The one is the ability to know what matters and focus in on that. I read a quote once, which I just love and it has stuck with me, and that is humanize the complex and automate the mundane. And I think that that is just so powerful, and especially when we look at technology and we look at the uh, vast array of tools that's available to us, um, and bringing that mindset to it, I think is a quite a powerful lens to how we then um, navigate our way through all the things we want to do. So digital innovation is at the core of this Zero Talk series. What are you doing to stay ahead of the curve? What uh, measures are you implementing within your team? So... 
there's so many different things. But if I think about if we want to humanize the complex, that means that we need to be able to ingest insights um, near time or real time and use that to then bring the human part of it. So bringing the empathy, bringing the ability to digest, understand and put concepts and context around what we're seeing. Um, and also then communicate. Machines are great at a lot of things, but probably those three things, they, they're not so, so great at, right? And that's why, you know, humanizing the complex allows us as humans to bring those elements to uh, decisions that we need to be making. And so what digital tools have actually been the most transformative for the underwriting business at Zurich in humanizing this in process? In humanizing. I mean, the, if, if we think about all of the uh, artificial intelligence and the way that we can synthesize data points in ways that we never could, there are so many different things. Um, but I'm going to talk about one that I'm really excited about at the moment, and I know the world is a buzz and everyone's talking about it, but it's large language models. And the use case and the ability to think about how we can use LLMs um, is just, I get so excited that I have to pull myself back and say, remember, focus on what matters, uh, focus on the things that are really going to move the needle for us. But I would say LLMs right now probably would be the biggest um, um, digital tool that we are, are working with. From our conversations within Zurich Talks, we know that customers are really are at the heart of the journey. So how have their changing expectations impacted the process and how you're thinking of trying to improve underwriting overall? Mm. And it, it ranges because we've got, you know, um, customers um, that we sell vehicle insurance to a car insurance to home insurance to really large, big corporates. At the end of the day, it's about listening to to what our customers are telling us and what their needs are. Um, and across different geographies. Some geographies, our customers want to be completely digital. Um, in other geographies, our customers want to sit down and have conversations. So it's all about being able to be agile to our customers' needs and then using technology in a way that simplifies the process in the quickest, most efficient way. We use it to, to automate and to simplify, but never to replace. Because at the end of the day, humanizing um, is such an important part of what we do. Um, and so using the tools to bring efficiency to us, that's really where our lens is as opposed to actually driving it to a decision or driving it to an outcome. So your friends and family, would you agree or would they think that the current process is consumer friendly enough when taking out insurance? You know, I think any any consumer, it doesn't matter what you're buying, you know, you'll always look at it and, and wish there was something different into it and wish that there was maybe less paper or something that was a lot easier. I would say insurance is no different. I suppose the context that I would always try and bring, and I think this is where my family probably stops listening to me, um, is that, you know, we're in a highly regulated industry. And so there are things that we need to think about. Um, but it doesn't mean that we can't try and make that process as smooth and as easy as possible. And I want to come back to this data point because you mentioned mm -hmm. that several times in this conversation, we're exposed to vast amounts of data. How can you as a company leverage this to improve your business and the overall client experience then? Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone talks about data and it is, it, it's the core of what we're doing, but the ability to ingest relevant data um, and then move it from just being that data point to something that is actually capable of generating an insight that's where we then pick that up as underwriters because we then want to move it to a knowledge to knowledge, um, and that's where we can then sit down with our customers and make and bring the data alive and use the data in a really relevant and powerful way. So it's now about being able to articulate and visualize and visualize components of for a corporate customer components of their risk that beforehand would have been points on a paper. We can now visualize it in a three D and very very different way. We can bring in more context for our customers. Um, but again, it has to be very relevant to their risk. And we need to make sure that obviously there's no bias or anything that has been unintentionally introduced um, as we're looking at different data points. When we speak about innovation, of course, a lot of this comes down to mindset. As a chief underwriting officer, how do you try to bring your global teams along in this digital journey and instill this culture of innovation? It's so exciting. And, you know, I say I say to the underwriters, if when we're looking at a risk, if, for example, it would take us, let's say, three days mm -hmm. um, of analyzing and looking, you know, putting the information through the different models and doing research, let's just say that whole process would take three days. If we think about how we can use technology to do that for us, um, it could take seconds, right? Worst case, it could take, let's say, half an hour, which means that we have the rest of the time to then ingest the output 
think about what it means, think about how we build a solution that is relevant, how we focus on on uh, looking at how we can create or build resilience, and then crafting our discussions so that when we sit down with our customer, we crisp, we on point, and it's relevant. So Penny, the year is 2030. What do you imagine for the underwriting business? What will it look like then? So I remember watching many, many years ago, the Minority Report with Tom Cruise. And I remember being just blown away when he was standing in front of like a, a glass whiteboard um, and the precogs were spewing out predictions of the future. And he was like swiping things right and left on the board. And so I, I always take that into what do I think 2030 would, would hold for us. Which is no far away. That's it really the terrifying bit, right? But I think one, if I, if I take it back to that, and I'd say one thing that as insurers we've been really good at is looking or building models based on history, the, our past. If we are starting to think about building models that are more forward-looking and data and technology and ability to ingest data um, is allowing us to do that, then I could imagine a not far off world in 2030 that will allow us the same kind of thinking as being able to to be more predictive of the future, more predictive of outcomes. And so we can sit down with our customers and we can talk through different scenarios with them um, and visualize what we think that outcome could potentially be. And I think the power we would then be is that you're able to really take mitigating action or build resilience in anticipation of what we think um, the future outcomes will be. And overall, how do you think Zurich as a group can continue to be innovative? There is a lot out there and being very clear on what matters for us and what we're trying to solve for. And then being playing around with the technology and the solutions that support that. Um, I think that that's where we will really make a difference because then we can execute on the things that are really, that will really make a difference. So sifting through the noise and focusing on the core competencies. Absolutely. And what capabilities will be key to accelerating innovation as we look to the next 10 years? Yeah, I I would say never forget that we are human business. Curiosity will never, ever replace anything. Even when you're looking at output, challenging it, making sure that we've thought through things from every different perspective. So I would say curiosity will never, ever go away. Um, and empathy, because if you're looking at data with an empathetic lens, um, it will tell you something different than if you were just looking at it coldly. What's the one value you would associate most closely with Zurich? I would say integrity. Integrity goes hand in hand with honesty. I would also put curiosity, and that's probably a bit of my own lens coming through, but I'd say that those would be the three that jump to mind when I think about Zurich. And finally, what's the one piece of advice you would give your younger self entering the fascinating world of insurance? I I would just say to myself, just embrace all the opportunities that you are given and be curious because it will take you places. Um, It will expose you to opportunities that you probably would never have dreamt of as a little girl. Um, And it will be refreshing to be able to explore the world So, yeah, that would be my advice. You're the best example of that uh, from South Africa to the wonderful offices here in Zurich. Uh, Penny, big thank you to you for spending your Monday morning with us. And if you've enjoyed this edition of Zurich Talks, discover more at www.zurich.com slash Zurich-talks. And if you found these insights helpful, make sure to join the conversation over at LinkedIn using the hashtag Zurich Talks. We'll see you soon. Take care and goodbye.